Okay, this uh, short video is going to be about using linear regression in Excel. So to briefly recap, if you read the blurb around this, you should know that if we have some data that is described by a straight line, we need two values to describe it and predict where that straight line is going. We need the slope, which is how steep it is, and the intercept, which is how far up and down it moves. Uh, the equations on the screen here label it as alpha and beta. Sometimes it's the M and C, sometimes they're B doesn't really matter what you call them as long as you know uh, that there's a slope and an intercept and those equations are quite difficult to get your head around. They're really quite involved. There's a lot of looping over uh, variables and subtracting variables from their average and so on. Uh, so writing that down on paper is difficult. So in practice, you want a computer to do it. And there's not one correct approach for how to do this. You could learn some programming, do it up in Python or whatever you prefer. You can get a copy of Mathematica. I don't believe that's free at the moment. And that will have some functions built in. You could use R, which is a stats package specifically designed for doing regression. So if you do more complicated things, R will probably be the one that you want. Uh, but this video is going to focus on Excel for a number of reasons. So certainly purists will say that you shouldn't use spreadsheets for anything. Um, but they actually do, do have some genuine advantages. For one, they're a lot more flexible than you might expect. They're not just for doing your finances month on month and adding up numbers. Uh, you can do a lot of really crazy things with them. Uh, but most importantly, there is a lower barrier to entry. If you try to learn how to do this with a programming language, you might be stuck for a couple of days trying to figure out how to do two plus two. They're not the easiest things to get into. Um, but with spreadsheets, everything's laid out for you. You know where your data goes, you know where the outputs are. It's all arranged quite nicely. So it's actually what a spreadsheet really is, is what's known as an integrated development environment. Um, it genuinely is that. If you know that term already and you've just laughed, it genuinely is. It's an ID and it genuinely works. You know where everything is. You can organize your projects really easily with it uh, in a way that's slightly more challenging when you're coding. And it's really ubiquitous. It's pretty much in most offices. Uh, most places will use it um, because you can you can prototype things really rapidly using Excel in a way that it might take programming a lot longer to do. So probably no matter where you go in the future, you'll have to either build a spreadsheet or fix someone else's spreadsheet or use it. So it's good to get uh, to grips with. And if you want to do more advanced stuff, there is always the more advanced options that you can uh, pick up in your own time. So let's do some Excel work. Right, so I've got my spreadsheet open here and we want to correlate some data. Now, I haven't got any data, so I'm just gonna make it up. I'm gonna do an X column and a Y column here. I'm gonna zoom into this. There you go. And I'll tell you what you can also do. Let's put some cell styles on this and just give it a header. So we know that that is our heading. And I'm just gonna type in some random numbers. Let's assume we went into the lab and we measured zero, one, two, three, four, five. We did six data points there. And the Y value that we measured, maybe it's a response to something. Um, I'll keep it simple. I'm just gonna put the same numbers in. Four. Now that means that this should be a perfectly straight line starting from zero going up. So we know in advance that Y equals MX plus C should be uh, one plus zero really. So let's have a look at it. Let's highlight all of these. And then we go to insert chart. And what we want is inserting a scatter chart, not a bar chart, not a line chart, <coughs> a scatter, because this is going to correlate two variables together, X and Y. And we don't really want anything too fancy here. We just want the data points. In fact, for now, I'm going to delete the things we don't need, such as the title and the grid. I would probably recommend getting rid of the grid in the background. The defaults on this tend to be awful. <coughs> anyway, what we've got here now is our straight line. And you can see it's a straight line, it's the exact same numbers. And traditionally, the way that you would get uh, your intercept and slope from here is to go to add trend line 
add that in. And what we've got are various options down the right here that appear. We could do a logarithmic scale, which it won't do um, without crashing because it doesn't quite fit. But add trend line, we just want a linear one. And down here, which you should get used to doing if you're going to use this to generate anything, display on chart and display the R squared on chart. And this is exactly what we expected. It says y equals x and R squared equals 1. Uh, R squared is a measure of how well correlate, correlated uh, the data is. The closer to one, the more perfect it is. So this is obviously going to be one because it's straight here. Now let's uh, let's let's randomize this a little bit. Let's put actually some random numbers in there. <clears throat> so code for that is equals rand. And if you want to just fill your data down automatically, you can double click that little square down in the right hand corner of your cell and it just shoots it down. And you can see now we're randomized a little bit. These numbers are now a lot more complicated and we can read y equals mx plus c from that. <clears throat> and we can see because it's actually random data, the R squared has gone down a lot as well. And normally you would just say, well, okay, let's write those numbers down. But let's, uh, let's write some numbers down that I think will actually break this a little bit. I'm going to go 0, 0, 0.0, 0, 0.0, 0 0.0013. What we've got there is this is now getting towards 0 0.0013. Let's actually half this again. Let's put a let's put some more zeros in here. Oops. What we've got is zero, 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 0001. And the thing is, if we start then changing this slightly, what we find is that all we've got is zero, zero, 0001. Now that should not be the case. This data is no longer perfect. What I'm doing here is editing the numbers to be slightly off. Let's change that to 45 maybe. And yet, our, our, square, our intercept value is not really changing a great deal. And that's because there is a bit of a sensitivity issue with this. You would have to go into some quite advanced settings to try and get more decimal places out of it. So instead of doing that, we're going to do something with a formula instead. And we're going to get the slope and the intercept instead. And the neat thing about Excel is it's really obvious. It's really easy to use. If you want the slope, you type equals and then slope. And if you're working in Excel and you you will be able to see um, my screen recording software doesn't pick this up. I learned that the hard way. But if you type in SLO, you get the word slope underneath and a list of other things that might match. And then you hit the tab button to auto complete it. Open your brackets because that's how an Excel formula works. And it's telling you with this look, um, little pop up, which you can't see on the screen recording software. Uh, this says known y's. So I want to know what my known y values are. Well, they're here. Right there. That's that range there. And then I put a comma to move to the next one. And it's asking me what my known x values are. Well, that's these here. Uh, I don't really need to close the bracket. It'll do it automatically. But when I press return, I get 8.37 times 10 to the minus 5. I'm getting more significant figures out more decimal places than I am from putting the trend line on there. So that slope function is getting me that automatically. That's actually automatically dealing with that formula um, that's really complicated. Let me just jump back to it for a second. So what you can see on the screen there is that complicated formula. Excel is doing that for you automatically, uh, almost instantaneously, in fact. And what if I want the plus C? What if I want the intercept? Well, again, Excel's really dumb. <clears throat> it's called intercept, and it's the exact same syntax. It's asking for my known Y values, <clears throat> which I'm going to put in, and known X values. 
and again I don't need to close the brackets for just a formula like this it'll do it automatically so if I hit return it gets me 1.9 times 10 to the minus 5 which is more the significant figures than here <clears throat> now a couple of other tricks you can do here before we <clears throat> move on what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all of that data and I'm going to go to the formulas tab this is a very underused feature uh, when people first iron out in Excel, but it is actually extremely useful. So I'm going to cover it a couple of times. What I want to do is this section here called Name Manager. So the Name Manager um, lets you name ranges, so you don't need to go back and keep typing them in or selecting them manually. I'm going to click the word Create from Selection. And what I get is a dialog that asks me to create names from values. Uh, and I'm going to say that the values are in the top row. So all the names are in the top row now. So if I highlight X here, <clears throat> what I can see in this top left hand corner here is it's called X. It's labeled it. And if I highlight all the Y's, I can see in the top right here, it says Y. So what happens if I actually go to that drop down menu and select X? There it is, it automatically highlights all my X values. Y, it's also my, or, uh, having all my Y values. Now, if I go to this slope and intercept section down here and type in equals slope, well, known Ys, I don't need to highlight it or find it anymore. I can just type in Y, <coughs> there it is, and X, known X values. Return that exactly the same number as before. And then intercept, <coughs> finish that off with a tab. Known Ys, I just need to type in Y, comma, X, return, there we go, my X and Y. <coughs> Uh, intercepts and there we go that's the first inroads into how to use Excel to do some linear regression and hopefully in the future some much more complicated stuff as well